I'm Charles Bartlett from the University of Delaware. You have something that looks about like that, and the specimens that you have, it's a green one. And if you happen to get the wrong one, we'll know momentarily. So once again, we know this is a phlegoromorph because the antennae is below the eyes, because the acellus is right down here. And if you look at the face, you would see the carini. So if we begin once again on the key to families, the first couplet reads, the hind tibiae with a large apical movable spur, as opposed to that spur being absent. So let's see if we can take a look at the hind leg. So we can see the hind leg. We're looking, of course, right in here. Right there is the hind tibiae. And you have the first, second, and third tarsomeres. And if the spur was there, it would be right there. And it, of course, is not there. Um, so you can read the rest of the couplet that describes the, the calcar, but the calcar is absent. So given that the movable tibial spur is not there, we go on to couplet two. The second couplet reads that the second hind tarsimere bears two apical spines and the tarsimere apex truncate or conical as opposed to the second hind tarsimere with a row of apical spines and the apex truncate or emarginate. So it just so happens that we're more or less in the right, yeah, we're in more or less in the right view. So I'm actually going to look on the tarsus over here. Um, you can see that that's the first tarsomere and that's the second tarsomere. And if you look at that tarsomere, you'll discover that it has a pair of spines as opposed to a row of spines. Um, we need to be looking at the ventral side of it. Let me, I'm going to pull another specimen over and we'll look at it again in a different specimen. Again, you have hind tibia here, first and second tarsimere, and you should be able to see, if not on the screen, at least in the specimen in front of you, the second tarsimere bears a row of, or sorry, a pair of spines as opposed to a row of spines. And actually, the apex is um, a little bit projected, so it's, it's not. It's, it's neither with a row of spines, um, nor is the apex truncated. It's, it's um, more conical. The other thing I'd like to point out very briefly is you can see the hind uh, tibia right here. And there's a couple of lateral spines on the hind tibia. That is a feature that's used as a family level feature and sometimes a genus level feature in groups of, of plant hoppers. So having discovered that the second hind tarsimere has two apical spines, we're going to go on to couplet three. Now that division, having to do with the second tarsimere of the hind leg, having a row or a pair of apical spines, is, a, is an important conceptual subdivision between the groups of plant hoppers. Uh, it kind of divides them in half, and the basal or the primitive plant hoppers have a row, and all the advanced plant hoppers have the spination of the second tarsimere reduced. Um, and if you get in the right group, it makes it a lot easier uh, to proceed from there. So we move on to couplet three. <coughs> couplet three begins clavis with numerous small pustule-like tubercles feature is one that it's um, your ability to see it in specimens varies a little bit. 
and you have to get the angle right. And where you're looking is, uh, is worth pointing out just briefly that this is the leading margin of the wing, and this is the trailing margin of the wing. In other words, when they fly, this is the, the margin that's in front. So the costal vein would be down here. So the clavis is up here. So what you're looking for is whether the clavis bears a series of small pustules. Um, in this particular case, the pustules are present. And that is an important and I would say relatively easy feature to help recognize this particular family. So we'll go on and read in this couplet. We, the, the couplet goes on to read the front wings are longer than the body, which is certainly true. The, uh, there is a well, width submarginal costal vein. And what you're looking for is a vein right along there. And that submarginal costal vein sets off a series of uh, parallel cross veins. So here's your costal vein along the leading margin and also extends along here. And right in this part of the wing, there's a series of small cells. And those cells are your, um, uh, the, well, those cross veins are setting off a series of cells. And those are, are the, that is the feature that we're looking for. Um, so you have a series of cells in the so-called precostal pre area on the wing. It goes on to say that at rest, the wings are held almost vertically on the side of the body. So if we take one of these and look at how it sits at rest, the wings are held so that they are basically parallel to the body. So this uh, happens to be a flatted. And the, the real key features to the flat today are the presence of those little tubercles in the clavicle area of the wing, plus the presence of the series of cells in the submarginal area of the wing. Um, it, you should be careful to make sure they are both present, because if there's any chance you had something from some other part of the world or from the neotropics, there are, are groups that have some other things going on. So there's two things I'd like to show you briefly um, along those lines. First is that you'll notice, there's a little bit cut off here, um, there is this comment about except in the Flatodinae about, and, and the Flatodinae are an unusual group. Um, and they're fairly, well, I won't say they're particularly common anywhere, but I would say they're a little more common in this part of the world than, than others. Uh, so this is a flatted in the subfamily Flathodinae. And instead of holding its wings parallel to the body, it holds its wings in what we would say tectiform, tent-like. Tent uh, so it's at an angle from the body. So this is your exception to holding the wing parallel to the body. But if, if you look, you can see the clavicle margin bears those, uh, uh, sorry, the clavis bears those pustules. And if I turned it a little bit, you can see it just a little bit over here. You'll see the row of, of cells. So this is very clearly a flatted, even though it's not the common uh, subfamily. Because I just happen to look in the teaching collection here at the University of Florida and pull this specimen out of the flatidae. You'll notice that it bears the row of cells along the leading margin of the wing and along the apical margin of the wing. But in here, it lacks those pustules. So even though this specimen would go through this couplet, it is not a flatid. It just happens to be the family Nogadinidae. Um, and this specimen would not key out in this couplet because Nogadinids, uh, in the strict sense, don't occur north of Mexico. 
um, but it is something that you might occasionally see. There's also the family Reconeidae, which has these marginal cells, but is, again, would not have the pustules in the clavicle area. So you, if you happen to get something that has that combination of features, it is probably not a family that occurs uh, north of Mexico.